Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship here at First Church. Wonderful to see you all today. Let me get all my stuff in order. A few announcements this morning. Um, if you would take out your connection card, you can fill it out to let us know you're here and um, any prayer requests or things that you want to pass along to us in the office. And then on the back are things happening at the church. If you are interested in participating, you can check the box and drop it in the basket so we 
um, know what you might be interested in, in doing here. Um, where'd I put my page? This morning is uh, Communion Sunday. It's our second go at our new little format. So just a reminder, um, if you weren't here la last month, um, we're going to split somewhere in the middle-ish, and some people go back, and some people come forward. Just follow your usher's instructions. It's the A-team. They're talking about it right now, so. Um, in your bulletin, also, you'll find a uh, little envelope as it says special Sunday on it. Um, today is World Communion Sunday. Today we celebrate and, and remember um, the, the one body throughout the world. Um, and remember, we are gathered here this morning, just like Christians all around the world, uh, sharing in, in the sacrament of communion. And in the United Methodist Church, um, if we take a special offering on that on some Sundays, and for World Communion Sunday, it goes towards um, scholarships and things like that for students in need. So that is, um, if you are interested in, in going above and beyond your normal giving to the ministries of the church, you can stick this in the envelope and drop it in the box. There's also an insert in your bulletin that has information on it about the uh, Advent Recipe Project we have going on. So if you're interested in participating in that, here is your form and just follow the instructions. If you did not receive one of our um, booklets for our stewardship campaign, there are some in the back here, I believe in the sanctuary, they might be out in the gathering area. Um, if you didn't get one, just ask and we'll make sure you do. And then it is hard to believe, but Trunk or Treat is almost upon us. It is October already. So we're looking for some folks to help participate in that ministry on October 27th. It's two to four. So if you're interested in donating some candy or if you are interested in, get, in decorating your car, um, sign up on the connection card or you can talk to Leela, our uh, children's ministry coordinator. And Aspire tickets are on sale. That uh, event is coming up quickly. It will be October 18th at 7 p.m. here at the church, uh, an evening of learning and worship and uh, for women. So if you are interested in participating, tickets are on sale. And um, they, the announcement says they're still looking for a few people, a few women who are interested in ushering. So if you fall into those categories, talk to Cheryl Whartonby. And then a final reminder, the Family Ministries uh, trip to Van Buren Acres is today from 2 to 4. So if you are um, going or interested in going, uh, keep that on your calendar. There's just a few hours between when you leave here and you need to be there. So don't forget. And those are all of my announcements this morning. So if you would, please stand as you are able as we join together in our opening hymn. may be seated and now it's time for a children's moment so will our children come forward
Yeah, yeah, you know the drill, don't you? And she comes sliding in. She's all set for a softball game, it looks like. Are you all set for a softball game? Okay. She has a softball game, too. It is the softball season. It used to be that when my girls played, we only played in the, the spring. So, um, softball, here you are. My sister just had her last softball game. You know, she has had her last softball game. No, today is her last softball game. Okay, today we have Communion Sunday, and we are starting up a whole series, a new series, sermon series, about being a disciple and following Jesus. I'm a disciple. You're a disciple? What's a disciple? That's a good thing. Tell me it's, what a disciple it's is. It's a person who follows Jesus. You got it. It's a person who follows Jesus. And today, in, as people were coming in, worship. You already have a cross? Did you all already get a cross? The scripture passage talks about that we are... We already have a cross, Peter. Like we did. I saw him playing with it. It's okay if he gets more than one. Can I have two? You can have two. There's these little holes in it. There's their little holes in them because you're supposed to be able to put... a. Oh, you can put them on a necklace, or you can put them on a keychain. Okay. Or you can, you can do it. Anybody else want to have? There's enough here for everybody to have to. Who else wants to? I made a shape. Okay. Everybody wants to. All right. There we go. There we go. All right. So the scripture that lesson this morning says that we're supposed to take up our cross and follow Jesus. And <clears throat> taking up our cross means that we're supposed to, to take everything of who we are. Everything, I see. Uh-huh. Everything of who we are and be and follow Jesus. Everything. Does that, that means everything. That means those are things that we do right those things that we do wrong, those things that it just means that we, that are hard, sometimes those things that are easy, we're to pick them all up and to go follow. And it's not always easy to follow, is it? No, it isn't always easy to follow. Have, have you ever tried to follow somebody in a, like, follow the leader? Yeah? It's not easy. Uh, so, uh, there we go. You hit the nail on the head. Some, did you hear what she said? Sometimes we want to be the leader. Yeah. Um, if we had three crosses and we could have put it in the dirt and made the three cro crosses. The three crosses on the, on the hill. Yeah. If you had three, you could do that. And so that's what sometimes you hit a lot of things that the rest of us are, that we want to be the leader instead of being the follower. So sometimes it's better off if we're the follower than the leader. Yep, sometimes, and most of the time, she said, sometimes it's better off if we're the follower than the leader. And it's, we should always be the follower of Jesus, right? Because, number one, he loves us. And he only wants the best for us right? And number two is that he is going to show us the right direction always. So it's better to be a follower of his. It's better to be a disciple. It's better to be a disciple, and that's what a disciple is, is somebody who follows, right? Okay. So take those crosses with you, in congregation, you all have your crosses, too. If you didn't get one, there's a basket to get them. And put them in your pockets. Remember, put them where you will see them, and you can take it with you. And remember, it help, helps a, you to... I made a shape. There you go. helps you to remember to take everything, the good, the bad, the ugly. But you know what? To Jesus... He'll make all things beautiful. That's right. Let's have a word of prayer. 
Okay, let's have a word of prayer. I can make. I see. You can make all kinds of shapes, can't you, with more than one? You want to grab a hand over here now, Lee, please? Grab a hand back there. Can we do? Can we do an echo prayer? Okay. Can we do an echo prayer? Okay. Dear Jesus. Help us, Help us to be your followers, to be your followers. And, to know that you love us. and to know that you love us. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you for sharing this time. Wow. That's great. I can't balance anything. My checkbook. Would you join with me in a moment of prayer? Lord, we give you thanks for this day, for this world you have made, for gathering in this place to worship you, to share in times of fellowship with one another, and to remember that you have called us to follow you. So we pray that as we are in this time of worship, you would speak to us. Help us to hear your word, to see your will for our lives, and to give us the courage to take up our cross and to follow you. And Lord, not just follow you here in this place, but as we go forth into the world to offer our lives to you so that others might, through our actions, through our words, encounter your grace. And Lord, we also pray that you would help us to be signs and symbols of your love and your mercy and your comfort and your healing to help those in need to be a, an arm for those who are suffering to lean on hands that offer compassion healing and caring touch, never forgetting to point to you. And so, Lord, we ask that you continue to move us forward on the path you've set before us, that all that we are, all that we have, all that we do, would be for your glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
What is a disciple? And is it possible to be a Christian without being one? You might not know it, but you are a disciple. It's just a matter of who you're a disciple of. Each one of us is modeling our lives after someone. So who do you follow? What do you listen to? What vision of the good life is capturing your heart? There's no shortage of roads to destruction, but there is one that leads to eternal life. Jesus is calling you down this path, saying, follow me. To be his disciple means to be an apprentice of Jesus, to model your life after him, to be like him. No matter who you are, where you live, what you do, you can live like Jesus, shining his light to your family, to your community, and your workplace. Discipleship is how his kingdom comes. It's how his will is done, here as it is in heaven. But it requires a decision. Will you follow him? Will you learn from him? Will you let him guide your life, your whole life, to be shaped in his image? Are you trying to be a Christian without being a disciple? The question and the invitation is right in front of you. Are you a disciple? Could you please stand for the reading of the gospel? It comes from Luke this morning. Then he said to them all, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit their very self? An argument started among the disciples as to which of them would be the greatest. Jesus, knowing their thoughts, took a little child and had him stand beside him. Then he said to them, whoever welcomes this little child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. For it is the one who is least among you all who is the greatest. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Today we start a series um, that's inviting us to take a closer look of our church's mission and of us being disciples of Jesus Christ for transforming the world. Over four weeks, we will focus on parts of our Christian journey to learn more about what it means to be a disciple and embracing life of faith and expressing God's love and actively serving others. We'll explore what it means to be committed followers of Christ and how it shapes us and equips us to be meaning, make a meaningful difference in the world as followers of Jesus. And so also you will find that um, the packet that you received, or if you have not received it, there's some in the back, that talks about our different steps of discipleship. And each week we will hit on one of our sermon topics is it covered in here. And it will help us to all see about being called to discipleship. It lets us see in this week, uh, John Lawrence, um, the tall John Lawrence. We have two John Lawrences. So that in the office, we always have to go, is it the tall John Lawrence or the Renee, and Renee, or part of Renee's Lawrence? So we have to, we have to get it all put together. So. The tall John Lawrence has written, 
of, about being a disciple. And so to read that and to see his, his discussion that lets us see and to know and be able to hear. Being a disciple of Jesus requires us to make a personal commitment. Did you hear that? It requires us to make a personal commitment. It isn't something that it, we just happen into. We have to decide that's what we are going to do. We make that commitment to follow. And did you hear out of the mouth of babes this morning? Natalie told us it's sometimes when we're trying to be followers, we much rather be the leader. Oh, friends, she was more true than we like to think. But when we follow Jesus, we know that he loves us and that he has a plan for us and he has a purpose for us and that there will be a way Sometimes when we get in this life and we are so confused and so overwhelmed that we wonder, where is the way? But Jesus reminds us he is the way, the truth, and the life. Well, our scripture passages this morning come to us to remind us from Luke that Jesus says that we are to follow him. Follow. Have you ever tried to follow um, somebody who is driving in front of you? I am not a very good person with directions, as I have shared with you in the past. And so I use my GPS a lot, for better or worse. But there are sometimes somebody will say, just follow me and I'll take you to that place. And that sets pure panic into my soul. Just follow me. And then there are the times that I say, well, just follow me. And I try to lead people in traffic. And I have to stop and think, wait a minute. That light is yellow for me. It will be red for them. I better slow down. Or sometimes I go, oh, you just turn here and forget to put on a blinker. Mm. And then I can see them going. But do you know what? When Jesus asks us to follow him, although we don't have a GPS to say this will be our next turn or this is where we are going next, we can trust that Jesus won't go so far ahead of us that we won't see or will leave us stranded someplace in a foreign location for he never leaves us or forsakes us. Jesus calls our, his followers to deny themselves and to take up their crosses daily. And that means that we make a commitment. Yes, Lord, I am here. I am yours. I will follow you. It means that we put our wants and needs second. Because if we put our wants and needs second and put Jesus first, do you know what? The scriptures tell us, and it's proven out in my life, that Jesus supplies all of our needs. It might not be all of our wants, but our world is a world that talks to us about, here's all of the things that you want. 
It's all that suggestion of here, you need this. Here, you need that. This past week, um, I have spent most of it in front of the TV because I came down with COVID. I am now COVID negative. I have tested again, just to let you know. This time, it really, um, forgive my vernacular, kicked my butt. And I couldn't do anything. I couldn't put thoughts together. I couldn't do anything, except I could watch mindless TV. And if I see one more political ad, I think I will scream. But what I found was even, I don't know, I might, even though I couldn't taste things, and even though I really wasn't hungry, it had all these suggestions of recipes and food that looked wonderfully good, and I wanted to eat it all. It was telling me, you need this cheesecake. Oh, you need this wonderful gummy looking dessert that has chocolate oozing all over it. You need all of this. And I know I don't need it, but boy, it was sure putting a desire to want it. And I know that with my body chemistry, that if I eat too much, I can put on weight with just thinking about it. And so it was like, I don't need this, but why do I want it? And there are other things in life that God says you really don't need. You might, it'll be supplied. Those are your wants. But we think our wants are more important sometimes than our need to follow him and follow his direction. To carry our cross and to go forward means that we let go of what the world is telling us what we need and to persevere, to keep on walking, to keep on going. Even when we don't think we have what we need, we are trusting that God will supply it. It lets us be faithful in times of, that are difficult. It lets us go forward and lets us see what God can do with our lives instead of us trying to be the leaders and control it. The value of losing one's life for Jesus shows that our purpose is found in being devoted to him and to telling the story of what he has done in our life and how he has revealed in so many things in our world and trusting, trusting. Sometimes we have said, well, this difficult situation is a cross I must bear. Peter had done a good part this summer about talking about the cross, thinking about those crosses that we said, those crosses that we bear. But that's not what the cross is that Jesus wants us to pick up. What he wants us to pick up is our commitment and our time and our ways of following and saying yes. Our second point in being a disciple is that we are to have great humility. Ah, having greatness by having humility. Do you remember that old song, Oh Lord, it's hard to be humble when you're perfect in so many ways. Being humble. And I thought, what does it mean to be humble? So knowing that um, I was foggy on my own because of COVID, I used my good old brain to Google it. And Google told me there were 25 
25. <laughs> Ways to be humble. I'm glad they have it all wrapped up in a nice little package. But some of the things, what they said, made a lot of sense. To be humble means that, according to Google, it means that you're admitting when you're wrong. Being open to acknowledge your mistakes. Okay, it hit me at the core on that one. This past week, my, my oldest daughter and I were at each other on the phone, battling back and forth. She said th some things that were hurtful. I said some things that were very hurtful. And we're still trying to work it out. We've both admitted that we love each other, but we still have some way to go. But we, we both had to say, Hi, I'm... We both had to say um, we're wrong. And that is hard to do some days. And the next thing they talked about was to listen closely to others. And I think that was where our mistake is, is that both of us were so involved in what each of us thought was right, we were not hearing one another. And to be humble enough to totally listen, not just to words, but beyond. The other piece that came through is to accept constructive criticism instead of becoming defensive. Oh, golly. My daughter says that's what she was doing, was giving me constructive criticism. And I was saying, but you don't understand what I'm trying to tell you. And I was trying to give her constructive criticism but we were yelling so loud at each other, neither one heard. And that's not always easy to hear. The next thing on the list was giving credit where credit is due. Let other people shine and have glory. They were talking about yesterday, as I watched the Ohio State football team, um, and as the people were running and the coaches were doing their thing and saying that they had all good players and that they were all trying to give each other chances um, to, to run the ball, and, and they have this new player in that is a freshman and he is just excellent and can do the one-handed catches, and the rest of the team is there and celebrating with him instead of going, well, wait a minute, he's a freshman. He really, does he deserve this time to play? I'm a much senior um, person. It's my turn. Let me get the glory. And sometimes in our own lives, we don't say that we're on a team, but we are. We're on the team of humanity. And we have to let others shine to their best ability. And we are at the point in life where at least I'm at the point in life where it's time to start building people up and not tearing them down because we want to look better. Our glory comes when God is glorified. And the next one's hard for me too. Boy, it's hard to be humble. Asking for help when you need it. Being vulnerable. It shows you're not afraid to, to be there and to learn from others. 
Those are just a few of the top, those are the top five reasons or ways to be humble. But if we have that in our life, if we ask for that, Jesus will show us because I am convinced that we cannot do this on our own. It is going to be by the power of the Holy Spirit that we let ourselves go and go to Christ to shine his light. Let self go and practice humility. Let self go and let others shine. Valuing others above ourselves helps us to reflect Jesus' character and build stronger and more compassionate communities. It lets us see the power and strength in others. And so then comes to our third point. Paying the cost. Paying the cost of discipleship. As I spoke with the children this morning, being a follower of Jesus is not always easy. They understand that already. I, I am always amazed at their wisdom. They seem to have a wisdom beyond their years Gee, in that passage of, let the children come unto me. Oh, treat them. Yep, yep, Lord, you're talking to us, telling us what's important. You're telling us that we are to have that innocence and to see again and to have that joy even when there is disappointment. To follow Jesus doesn't mean that we will always be popular. Some people will think because we, we follow Jesus and we believe in a Jesus that um, I've heard some who, can, who claim to be intellectuals say that Jesus is a crutch. And you're just holding on to that so you make yourself feel better. Well, I know that Jesus lives. I know that he is more than a crutch in my life. I know that he is my living savior. I know that he is there. I know that even though those might make fun of me, he is still my life, my passion, and my awe. And we say that in this country where we are free to follow. But think of those people that risk their lives day in and day out to follow Jesus and to stand up against the regimes of people who are saying, no, it's the government is more important. That exists in our world. And it's hard to believe that it exists. But it does. And the cost of discipleship might mean that we give up some time that we wanted to do something for us and go do something for others. We have watched as the destruction in North Carolina and um, in the Floridas, but in Florida, but in the Carolinas more, it seems like, that the flooding and the horrible things that have happened, that people have been willing to sacrifice what they have and what they have done to go and to help. They talk about the linemen that go out and try to get power back up and going again for those folks. They talk about the others that are willing to be there to bring in food they talk about others who have sacrificed time to, to go to take care of others in a time of need. 
One of the stories I read was about how that um, Walmart had brought in showers for people to be able to come and to take showers. Do we take those things for granted? That people are willing to give up of their time. I know some people that are, are linemen who leave their families and sacrifice time with them to go help others. Yes, it's their job, but they volunteer to go do that. The sacrifices that we make are to deepen our relationship with Christ. And those that have been working in the Carolinas, I've heard them say, you know, things are dire, but that how people are so thankful and receptive. And to know that electricity being brought to them can save a life in the hospital. Or it can let somebody just have a light in a home so that they know that they are not by themselves. Are, are we willing to sacrifice so that our lives might be a, a deeper relationship with Jesus? So we come to this point, and we are looking at all of the ways of following Jesus. But I want you to see, yes, it, it is a cost. Yet, yes, we are to deny ourselves. Yes, we are to have humility. And, and it, paying the cost is costly. But I want to tell you the reward is great. The reward is overwhelming. The reward of following Jesus is knowing that you have, you have salvation. You have forgiveness. You have grace. You have a way to continue to go and to grow and a way to show God's love to others. And the world can be changed not because of what we do, but because of who God is and what he has sent his son to do. And my friends, the exciting part is that we get to be a part. If we just say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, I have decided to follow you. May there be no turning back. Amen. Part of our following comes the invitation to come to his table. He invites all to his table. Our table is open to all who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves his love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. 
Glory Glory be be to God. God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You have made from one every nation and people to live on the face of the earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending... (laughs) I'm sorry. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. He commissioned us to be as witnesses to the ends of the earth and to make disciples of all nations. And today, his family and all the world, joining at his holy table, On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks for it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. Again, he gave thanks. You gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is... My blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ Christ has died. Christ Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with your church throughout the world and strengthen it in every nation and among every people to witness faithfully in your name. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly table. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, let us pray. Our Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Servers, please come forward.
For those that need um, gluten-free, um, the gluten-free is here in the center of the table. If you need that, please just come and get that.
Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, thank you for setting the way. Thank you for calling us into your footsteps. Thank you for giving us life and hope and peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And may we go as his followers, even when there are bumps in the road and there are detours, he's still there to lead us through. Go following him, sharing his love with others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <laughs>